know how that goes. Welcome to Bella in Your Business. This is Bella Vasta with Jump Consulting, and today I have a special treat for you. I have Bruce Irving with me, and um, you guys, I was listening to another podcast, the Social Media Marketing Podcast, which you know I love, and Bruce was on it. And Bruce, I remember I was meal prepping, listening to you, so super excited, because I was like, this man is talking about the pet industry. You guys, were in for a treat today because Bruce actually helps pizzerias or pizza restaurants all around the country do exactly what we're looking to do, which is to saturate the markets. Bruce is the visionary behind smartpizzamarketing.com and the host of another podcast, which you should totally go check out, called Smart Pizza Media Smart Pizza Marketing Podcast. Um, on his podcast, he interviews the leading minds in the pizza industry. But you guys, you can learn so much from this. It's very global, um, global lessons. And you can listen to the Smart Pizza Marketing Podcast at smartpizzamarketing.com. Bruce is also a speaker and um, he teaches us how to use social media better in our restaurant or small businesses. So Bruce, without further ado, welcome. Thanks so much for having me, Belle. I'm excited to be here today. For sure. So why don't you give us a little bit of background, Bruce? How exactly did you become the pizza marketing guy? I know. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, I was in the pizza industry for my whole life, you know, and I always tell the stories on our podcast of how people got into uh, the pizza industry specifically because it's always a unique story. Either their parents owned it or they went to school for something else or they thought it would be fun to open a pizzeria and it's not that much fun, they come to find out. Um, so... I was the same way. I started off, I think it was in high school, I started working for a local pizzeria here that's a pretty well-known brand, and I loved it, and it was good. I wasn't great at school or reading or testing, so I knew that uh, some sort of business had to be my way out, and uh, pizza is just what I grew up and what I knew, and that's how I got started in the business, and as I grew and got older and grew businesses in the pizza industry, uh, people would ask us, you know, what are we doing for marketing? We had a pretty successful restaurant, and that turned into the podcast, and now that's turned into our agency where we help pizzerias and restaurants use today's marketing to help grow their local business. I love it. It's so organic, and um, I have a similar story, so I can totally like relate to what you're saying. So when someone comes to you, um, they're probably looking to get more clients or something, right? Like, um, What are they doing wrong that you turn around and fix, and what, what's a common theme that you see people are doing wrong? Um, I don't, the problem with the restaurants and pizzerias that we deal with is they're busy, you know, they're busy people and times change quick, especially over the last, I'd say five to eight years. I mean, things change really quickly, like way quicker than you think they do. And they may have a successful business and they've, they've grown it organically over the last 10, 15, 20 years, but the things they were doing aren't working today. Uh, direct mail is very expensive. It works, but you have to spend a lot of money and have a large budget so we try to teach individual operators to use the marketing that's working today, and then we teach them how to use it, how to use Facebook advertising, how to use Instagram advertising, how do you collect emails on your website, and then be consistent with that marketing. And we also try to teach them, like, how do you talk on those different platforms? Like, what you say to somebody on Facebook is different than what you would say to somebody on Snapchat or in an email. Uh, so that's kind of what we do the podcast about. We try to search out people who are doing great things and learn from them. And then also with our agency that we run, we do a lot of, we have a lot of data because we spend a lot of money on advertising with all of our clients. And, and then we just try, we just talk about that on the podcast and teach other people what we're doing so that they can do the same. So if someone comes to me and says, Hey, um, I'm trying to grow my business. Generally, they're either doing things that don't work anymore, or they're spending way too much time and money on one particular thing. Uh -huh. And they don't know what to really say in social media because it's different, you know, it changes on a, on a, on a almost monthly basis, you know that. So it, it's sure. kind of just keeping them up to date and uh, teaching them what's relevant today. So let's talk about the differences between IG and Facebook. Like what are, um, how would we communicate on IG if we were a local business looking to saturate that market? What are some tactics that we would do? I would say that Instagram's great for branding and branding your business. You know, the, obviously the feed is the place where you do really high quality photos or short videos mm -hmm. in stories is a great place to kind of show, especially for a restaurant, the behind the scenes of what you're doing on a daily basis. Like what is it really like to work in the kitchen or to interview your staff or to show things that you wouldn't put on your feed, but you really want to tell that story of what your brand is and what you're doing. Because a lot of people are afraid to get on video. It's not something that they're comfortable with. So if you can use Instagram, the stories platform to tell your story in a visual 
slash video form, you're going to really stand out among the people who are in your local market because out of the people we talk to, nine out of 10 are afraid of video. So if you can be that one out of 10 who's not afraid of video or just gets comfortable with doing it over time, you're going to be the person in that market that stands out for your, your type of business, whatever that business is. It could be a salon. It could be a dog walker. It could be a restaurant, whatever it is. Nine out of the 10 people that are your competition are afraid of video. So if you, if you can get comfortable with that, then Instagram could be a great place for you to practice video. And then you can use Facebook later on to once you get comfortable to maybe create some video ads and then use that in advertising. Without a doubt. Um, what's coming to mind right now is as pet sitters and dog walkers, they go and they visit maybe say 10 houses a day. So you could literally do a 15 second clip at every single house, introduce the new dog that you're doing, and then someone could see what a day in the life of a pet sitter is because no one yeah. has an idea. And I'm not talking about the cute, warm and fuzzy one, like maybe the one where you're picking up poop. <laughs> like right. The real like, oh my God, did she just post that? <laughs> right. And, um, and make a story out of it, you guys. This is like super great. And, and Bruce, you're so right. Um, so many people are afraid of video and, and that's where everything is going. So every, that is going to be the norm. But if you can get on the forefront of that right now and stand out as a, as a leader in your community even – you're really going to have that much bigger of an impact. Um, so what about Facebook? You know, um, do you believe in having Facebook groups like locally or um, people say Facebook advertising? I'm sorry, I'm giving you a lot of questions here, but people it's say okay. like Facebook advertising in general. So a lot of people go, okay, I'll boost this post for five bucks or all right, I'll just boost it to the zip code. You know, like talk to me about how we can get even more specific and how you kind of help those pizza restaurants. You told a story I'm thinking of um, to Michael Stelzner. It was um, about, I think it was someone in Boston, which was where I'm from. That's where my heart is. And, That's where I'm from. Yeah. And, and you were saying that um, on the lunch breaks, you were targeting ads specifically at lunch breaks for people to come in and get pizza. And I was thinking, wow, we could do that for like, are you running home on your lunch break to let your dog out? Because a lot of people yeah. do. Talk to me about that whole story. I mean, how you could use the that. thing about Facebook is the data that it has. It's kind of scary if you're looking at it from like a personal aspect. Yeah. But as a business owner or a marketer in my circumstance, then it's super great because I could target so many people. Like if you're a dog walker, you could target people who live in your zip code, who own a dog, who have a job and make over this much salary so you can afford to – have a dog walker yeah. and you could target them with, Hey, are you busy? Too busy to walk your dog? Go check out this free whatever. And then they can have them go to your list. So the targeting aspect of Facebook is great. And not only that, but like there's so many different things with Facebook that you can do as a restaurant specifically. Um, like if you're having a special, you can just put it to your page and boost it. That's the easy way. Mm -hmm. Or you can upload your email list and target other people. Or if you want to get new customers, you could exclude your page and have a really aggressive deal to people who like pizza in your neighborhood and it won't show to the people who already know who you are to get new customers. So there's so many different aspects of things that you can do on Facebook, which to me makes it like the best advertising platform available right now. Yeah. Something I don't know a lot of my listeners have heard about is retargeting and I imagine you do that, right? So you put an advertisement out and you're starting to build the list and retarget. Do you do that? Can you talk about that if you do? Yeah. So there's a, there's a couple different ways you can retarget. You can do what we just talked about, which is upload your email list mm -hmm. and target people who are on that list. Mm -hmm. As long as it's, you know, it has to be a pretty good size email list. So I'm not sure yeah. how big your listeners emails are, but our restaurants have four five, 6,000 emails just because of the online ordering aspect. So right. you can upload your email list. You could put a pixel, a Facebook pixel on your website, yeah. and then you could retarget people who visit your website you could also retarget people who visit specific pages on your website. Mm -hmm. So if you have a pixel on your specials page or your uh, contact me page, but they didn't follow through with the contact, you can repixel them later. Mm -hmm. um, and also you could target people who, you know, certain demographics in your area, whether they like your page, they don't like your page, friends of people who like your page. So there's so many different ways to retarget people on Facebook and you don't have to spend a lot of money. The thing about Facebook advertising where that's different than like things like a postcard or direct mail is it you can test and tweak as you go. So if yeah. you want to spend $20, $20 on an ad and it doesn't perform well, you didn't go through that whole process of copywriting a postcard, printing a thousand of them, mailing a thousand of them, and then realizing that it was a bad copy or a bad postcard and it didn't work and you're out $500. Right. 
You know, for Facebook, you can spend twenty dollars and test, and if it works, you spend more money on it. Or you create similar posts and uh, ads. If it doesn't work, you kill it, and you don't do that ever again, and it only costs you twenty bucks. Uh huh. I imagine I, I really love the example that you just used about um, people who make a certain amount of money that live in your zip code that have a dog, um, and I I think that's a very easy and simple target. But I want our listeners to really pick up on that because. I think that they're just really targeting like everyone in a zip code um, between the ages of whatever, you know, and I, I want to yeah. encourage you guys to really think about it. Dennis, you said something at social media marketing world 17 that I actually made a graphic of. <laughs> um, it, he said, use Facebook as a database. And it's exactly what you were just saying, because it is like Facebook. It's scary. And if you don't know how to do it, because admittedly, even for me, Bruce, it is just, a mind conundrum. Okay. Yeah. That's where someone like yourself comes in. Right. And I'm not trying to pitch you, but I, I'm honestly saying like, that's why you need people on your team like yourself. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so many, and now with Facebook chat bots, I mean, we're doing a lot of that now. I'm so that's, excited about that. You're yeah, doing them actually. Yeah. We're doing chat bots. It's, I mean, the restaurants is different. Like we so, have chat bots, but you can actually order through Facebook yeah, messenger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we're doing a lot of things like it's, it's almost transitioning us from email to Facebook, which is not necessarily the best thing and the thing that I suggest. I still think that you should collect emails. Yeah. But what we're seeing right now is it's early. And if you are if you can get people to message your page yeah. and use tools like ManyChat, which is free or only 10 bucks a month for up to 500 subscribers, uh, and send not necessarily ads, but communication through Facebook Messenger to those people who have messaged you, mm -hmm. we're getting like 80, 90, 95% open rates. That's so it's incredible. crazy. Because, because it comes up on your phone. It comes up like as a, as a message. And you're like, oh, yeah. someone sent me a message. And, and people aren't jaded by it yet either. It's still right. a novelty. It's not so, like, totally. oh, here comes another like crap, like a sales email, right? It, I don't want to get too yeah, far you, ahead because you and yeah. I know what it is, but break down right. for my audience what a chat bot is. Explain right, how so that I'll, works. I'll give you an example of how we use it. Okay. So we have someone's Facebook page, right? And we'll say something like, Do, would you like 20% off this weekend? Type yes as a comment below. So they type yes as a comment below. And it's almost like an email autoresponder, but it's on Facebook. And you have to add things like yes, yeah, sure, okay, I'm in. Because sometimes if you say type yes, they're gonna type yeah, and if you don't account for that, they're not gonna get that message. Yeah. So you have to pick some keywords that they're gonna type in as a comment. When they type in that comment, they're gonna get an automated response in Messenger that says, hey, this is Jamie from XYZ Pizza, is it okay if I send your coupon here? And then they're going to reply yes. And then when they reply yes, it automatically replies back to them, hey, here's your coupon code. Go here to their xyzpizzeria.com and use it anytime this weekend expires, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then it'll be at the bottom. We'll say just type stop to opt out of these messages from now on. And that subscribes them to your Facebook Messenger list, so to speak. And then moving forward – you can send broadcast messages to everybody who's subscribed to your list as long as they've messaged your page and have opted in that way. And it's so amazing that you can do that. I mean, think about that, you guys. Like, you could send a broadcast message to as many people who have already subscribed or messaged your Facebook page. And right. I know right now, you know, it, it, it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning, Bruce, that things are just changing so fast. Because I even remember two years ago, I was like, do not message me, email me. I want it all in email. And now I'm yeah. like, bring all the messages. You know, yeah. I've got Messenger downloaded on my phone. And I, I mean, I have some clients in other countries. I'm using it as a phone call. Like, yep, it's true. If I was a dog walker, I would do something like, hey, want to have this list of the top five foods that you could feed your dog to have a healthy dog. And then it would, instead of saying, go to a landing page, which is what we traditionally did before, I would be like, message me. Yeah. And then as soon as they messaged me, it would be automatically, automatically sent to them uh, in the messenger. And then you can, you have your messenger on your phone. You can just, hey, you got my healthy dog tips. Do you need anybody to walk your dog? We do that too. I love that so much. I mean, just think about how it's changing conversation. It's such a 
uh, you're going to get a different response rate, definitely, because it's so much more personal. It feels a little bit more personal that way. And when we feel like we can interact with a brand and a brand is actually interacting with us, we feel like we can trust them and we know them and like them. And as pet sitters and dog walkers that have hundreds of keys to hundreds of houses, you know, that's something really big for our industry. Right. So I could see that like, um, going away of the days of the landing page to download your, you know, how to get pet stain out of a carpet. And here comes the chat bot. So you said yep. we could use many chat, any others that you suggest? Uh, that's the easiest one. Uh, there's others that you can use, but they're complicated. Many chat is, if you know how to use MailChimp, you can set up many chat and it's yeah, free. Sure. It'll just be branded with many chat if you have the free option. But if it's, it's like $10 a month, if you want to get rid of that and have it be automated, just be, be natural though. Don't spam and, you know, make it a natural conversation. And if you're listening to this six to 12 months from now, the, uh, we'll probably have ruined that already. Like they said, they say, I think that's a good says, point. Or that's a really good point. <laughs> so we're teaching our guys, Hey, listen, if you're going to use many chat or, uh, the Facebook bot, like do it now, now is the time it's now is email marketing in 2003. Right. Right. And like I said, because it's still nostalgic in a way it's still, yeah. people still care about it. It hasn't become a spammy place. People are excited by it. Yeah. And it's not as, I don't know what, a lot of customers that we have ask us about text messaging and I'm still on the fence about if I enjoy text messaging or not. I feel like text messaging is more intimate than it's more intimate for sure than email, but it's not as intimate. Like Facebook Messenger is not in, as intimate as text messages. Like you can message me on Facebook if you're, if I've known you or I met you once, but don't text me unless you know me for like in person, you know? Preach it, brother. <laughs> I totally agree. I don't do text messaging too much at all, actually. <laughs> Um, so we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, I want to know a couple of stories of people of how you've taken them from dire straits or whatnot to implementing really great marketing, what you did and now where they are. Okay. We'll be right back. And we're back with Bruce Irvine from smart pizza marketing. And I want to know, tell us some stories. I love storytelling. Tell us, um, about someone that was you know, dire straits, just their marketing was not on point. They were admittedly every entrepreneur wearing way too many hats, trying to do the best they could. And then, um, the hero story, you swooped in and saved the day. Tell us. All right. I'm going to give you two, I'm going to give you two different stories. One of stories like our company helped them because that's what we do. And another story is just somebody in our mastermind group who, um, just needed to have his eyes open to what the possibilities are with marketing nowadays. Yeah. And I'm not going to mention the name of the company, but there is a big company in the restaurant world that does a lot of direct mail. Mm -hmm. And they're a really big company and they're expensive. It's like $800 to $1,200 a month for direct mail pieces. And it's a decent program. The problem with the program is it's it's like 80 or 90% of the entrepreneur's marketing budget. And I never believe that you should spend all of that percentage on one specific aspect of your marketing budget. Mm -hmm. So he's in our mastermind group. And this is about a year ago. And I said, listen, why, you, you're spending $1,200 a month on direct mail. Why don't you cut that back or eliminate it? Try Facebook, try Instagram, see how that goes for you. If in three months it's not working and you can always go back to the direct mail, you're already saying the direct mail has decreased its value in the return you're getting. So why not try something different? Sure. So we, we come up with a strategy for him. He was using a lot of Facebook advertising, implementing Instagram, started an email marketing program and his business has gone up 15 to 20% every single month since wow. Last year of 2000, and I think it was over a year ago now, 2016, January, we started. Mm -hmm. And every single month, his business is up 10 to 15% just because he's telling stories and using advertising and built his email list and has done that. And he did it, he's done it on his own. Like he's just, he's in our mastermind group. He comes in twice a month, asks us questions, but he's an action taker. Yeah. And if you tell him to do something, the very next time you meet him, he's taken that action and has the results for you, whether it worked or it didn't. And he's not afraid to have something not work. He doesn't quit and I say- I love people like that. <laughs> I tried Facebook, I put an ad out, it didn't work, so I'm done. You look at their page, they have 27 likes and they've put three posts on there. Yeah. I'm like, listen, can you try it five times maybe? Because <laughs> twice obviously didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it didn't tell you it worked. And then yeah. similar stories. Now the other story is just a same, it, it, it's the same exact example, except we just did it for him. He didn't have his, he didn't have enough time to do it. And, not a lot of people who are business owners, especially small business owners, have the time yeah. to do that. You either have the resources or you have the time. Uh -huh. uh, and you have to have one of the other. Uh -huh. um, because 
you have to be able to either pay someone like us to do it for you and actually come up with a strategy and a plan and to figure out which platforms are best for you because mm-hmm. we're all over the country yeah. and Snapchat is big if you're in a college town. But right. if you're in Iowa, nobody's on Snapchat. <laughs> I don't care what they That's say. That's such a good point. Talk to me more about that because I know a lot of people are saying, oh, I don't know, Instagram. I, I, not a lot of people are on Instagram. But if you were to seriously go to some place where people are on break from work, they're either scrolling on IG or, or Facebook, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I mean, unless you're in the North Pole, you're on, <laughs> there are people around you on Instagram. There's 700 million people on Instagram and 2 billion people on Facebook. Like yeah. there's only like 6 people, a billion people in the world and China isn't even allowed to have Instagram so <laughs> or Facebook. So I mean that eliminates 3 billion people right there. So almost everybody else in the entire world is using Facebook and Instagram. It's just it just means if you've tried to do it and you couldn't figure it out, it just means you had a bad strategy or you weren't yeah. consistent with it. Um, and it changes like uh, like Twitter. Like Twitter used to be phenomenal. Now it stinks. You know, now yeah. engagement has gone right down the tubes and uh, you don't get any engagement. And Instagram too. It used to change. Like it used to be top of feed. Like if you posted something, it would be on the top of the feed. Now it's mm-hmm. about building engagement. It's not about posting three times a day. It's about posting really good photos and trying to get people to comment and like and engage with you mm-hmm. because that the next post they'll see. So it changes on a daily basis and just keeping up to date of what's going on in those platforms and 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 just testing. Like the cool thing about social media is it really doesn't cost a lot of money to test it yourself. Mm-hmm. Like to sit down at home at of 1030 at night and to run a couple ads, spend an hour, spend $20 and then go reassess the next day and see if it worked or not. And you can tell. And if it did, great. Write it down on your Excel sheet or a piece of paper and take a note and do more of that until it doesn't work. And then right. when it doesn't work, reattest. Right. Just start over. I love everything that you just said because it's so true. It's like you guys, the... The facts and figures are there. Uh, Instagram and Facebook can be lethal for your business. And if you just feel so stressed out, if you, if the truth that you said, you have to have resources or time. So the resources to get someone to do it for you, if you don't like marketing, if you don't enjoy testing it and figuring out and being learning, and I, I highly recommend you guys go, oh, sorry. I highly recommend <laughs> you guys go right now to, um, to go check out Bruce and, and follow him on Smart Pizza Marketing podcast and the website and maybe even check out the mastermind and see if it's right for you because when you can get so pointed into a specific topic like this that can really kill the ROI I mean like they invest something with you whether it's just time to listen to the podcast or resources money to be a part of the mastermind group and if you are an action taker if you really do it then it's going to work. It's totally going to work. It just, it really all comes down to you, the listener. I want you to really think about that. That's the reason why some people are successful and other people aren't. It's, are you willing to do the work? And if you're also yep. thinking, oh, Bella, Bruce, I have so much stuff to do. Well, I want you to sit down and clear your head and figure out what your priorities are. Because if your priorities are the two major things that we need to do in, I'm going to say the pet sitting and dog walking industry, which is get more clients and find people to work for us. This is the way you can do both of those, but you have to understand how it works and you have to understand a strategy. Bruce, do you have any closing thoughts for our listeners or how can they, they reach out to you or think about your mastermind? Yeah, you can just find me over at smartpizzamarketing.com is the website. We're on uh, iTunes, Stitcher Radio at smartpizzamarketing.com. If anybody ever comes to me and says, Hey, I want to work with you or hire you. I say, you know what? Go listen to the podcast first. Don't hire us. Go listen to the podcast. Everything that we do physically do in our agency and with our clients we talk about on the podcast go listen to that get to know what we talk about see if it's for you and then take the next step after that but i always say to people listen you have time i have three daughters we have a million dollar agency i do podcast i do other interviews and it's just about prioritizing your time like you could sleep one hour less in the morning or at night if you really want it bad enough the great thing about this world in this country, especially in 2017, is you have way more options and ability to do what you want to do in 2017 than anyone ever did in the past. So yes. all you have to do is decide and then go get it and just be consistent and don't give up. And if you put in the work and you're consistent over time, the results will come. I just got chills when you said that. You're so right. I did my 50th podcast all about consistency and you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Like right. I did my podcast. We're on episode number 
and we do a live show on Tuesday night. So we've done over oh. 200 episodes of the show. Wow. In the first 50, like my mom and three other people listened. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Like we just reached 900 downloads a week, which I'm so excited about. But I've been awesome. slowly watching the number go up, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I definitely didn't have that the first 10 or 20. You know, yeah. I didn't even have consistency myself. I didn't have consistency until about a year ago. They come out every week. So Guys, it just takes some hard work and you can absolutely do it. And I love yeah, your you... point about 2017. I mean, never has the world ever been so small. We can no, get, never. we can build our team very easily online. Bruce, I could talk to you all day, but I'm going to let you go. I know you have other things to do. Thank you so much for being a guest on Bella in Your Business. If you guys love this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. And remember to always keep jumping.